Along with that dryness, there is skin dryness. Just dryness everywhere. Dryness in your mouth, dryness in your throat, dryness in your lungs, dryness in your skin. So the skins can get scaly and dry. There's more risk of developing eczema, um, thick calluses on your feet, elbows, fingers. Um, and so that dryness leads to cracking and bleeding. Um, so, and itching as well. I do have the dryness. I can't swallow without drinking fluids. I'm careful, I can't chew without drinking the fluids along with, you know, either right before my bite and swallow it and then take the bite or take the bite and immediately sip a little fluid to go in there with the fluid and then again drink some fluid for it to go down. Uh, and then of course in our esophagus we have moisture secreting glands that are supposed to help everything go down smoothly. <clears throat> but people with Sjogren's and me tend to you know lack that and it makes it harder to swallow which makes it take longer for our gut to send everything through it takes longer to digest um, and you know that that moisture that mucusy stuff that goes down also helps the stomach there's of course the stomach's very acidity and we need that acid to break down the foods um, but the food hasn't even really, for me, begun to break down because my mouth doesn't have the um, enzymes floating around in it that are needed. So our food starts breaking down immediately in our mouth as the enzymes float around. And then it continues to break down as, you know, as we swallow it and it goes down and the enzymes continue to break it down and then it ends up in our stomach where the acid and the churning in there breaks it down more. And some people with Sjogren's can have some, um, something called some gastroparesis, which means that the nerve innervation that's supposed to make the stomach do all that contracting is slowed down. Um, some people to the point where it just it just doesn't go anywhere except come right back up again I and mean, then that began to happen to me and i had a test that you know where they put the scope down endoscopy i think it's called and found that i had a hiatal hernia and so they but they didn't say anything about how fast or slow my stomach was contracting like it needs to do. But so I was put on omeprazole and it seemed to help me a lot, but it still takes a long time to digest my food and get it to go through me. And um, so that medication was omeprazole, which I had been on for years and years until just a few months ago. And I didn't realize how bad it affected me until I stopped it. I still have a little acid reflux because of it, but I have not had that issue where I wasn't able to swallow my foods. Of course, that is also because I use the technique of fluid swallowing and using gravies on my food as well, which I used to hate gravy. Now I love it. <laughs> um, so, other symptoms, then we can talk about the gut. Um, the gut has the exact same issues. You know, the um, once the material leaves your stomach, it's supposed to have enzymes that go into it as well from your pancreas. And if you have some pancreas difficulties, those enzymes are decreased um, and maybe they may spur be sporadic, sometimes, you know, put out well by the pancreas and sometimes not. Um, so that can, you know, that can vary. And that's a hard thing to get diagnosed. Um, so if they were to do a stool sample, you know, they could 
find out, but most uh, providers, no providers have suggested that for me. But I know that when I take a probiotic that has enzymes in it, you know, specific enzymes to deal with fat, like animal fat, then I feel better. So I, I know that's no proof, but that is a symptom I feel that I'm affected by. Um, and I'm not sure about the general population of people who have Sjogren's. But that is one symptom I have. 